Welcome back. Over the course of his storied career, filmmaker Ken Burns has become a bit of an expert on everything from baseball to the Civil War. And with much of the country at home, his award-winning documentaries are now reaching new and younger audiences. We're going to talk to Ken about that in a moment. But first, a look at what he does best. For more than four decades, legendary filmmaker Ken Burns has brought history to life, focusing his lens on major cultural influences. From America's favorite pastime to iconic landmarks. It took 14 long years to build the bridge. Burns has bridged the gap between past and present, educating audiences with his extensive body of work. His deep dives into history, offering lessons not often found in any textbook. This is the story of us. And guess what? There's no them, which is what we all try to make up. You know, in the U.S., it's us, no them. Throughout his career, Burns has won 16 Emmy Awards and two Oscar nominations, one of which came in 1981 with his first film for PBS, Brooklyn Bridge. It's the biggest bridge in the world. But it was his 1990 11-hour televised series, The Civil War, that solidified his reputation as a master filmmaker. The Civil War was fought in 10,000 places. An audience of 40 million tuned into the premiere of the film, which showcased panning and zooming over still images to create the illusion of movement, a camera technique now known as the Ken Burns effect. Burns receiving a Lifetime Achievement Honor at the 2008 News and Documentary Emmy Awards. Thank you all so much for this extraordinary honor. I am grateful and I am humbled. It is about just making a living and taking terrible risks. And Burns keeps finding stories to tell. The fledgling anti-war movement finds its voice in resistance to the draft. His wide-eyed curiosity and passion this is American history firing on all cylinders. As abundant as our country's rich history. All men are created equal. Burns and PBS now teaming up to offer his documentaries to students forced to learn from home, providing his unique snapshot of the past as we live through America's next historic chapter. Ken Burns joins us now. Ken, I, I can't think of a more appropriate guest to have in this moment than you. You've been chronicling history for decades, really. And I was just curious, where do you think the moment that we find ourselves in right now will find itself in history? It will be huge. It's unprecedented. Uh, it will be up there with discussions of the Depression of the Civil War, of uh, obviously the Second World War. It was nice to hear Julie Andrews reference the kind of togetherness that was necessary to, to, to do that, the subsuming of what I want, individual freedom, to the larger what we need, the collective freedom that, that uh, has always gotten us through tough times. This is unprecedented. We do have histories of pandemics, the flu in, in 1918. We also have, uh, can you imagine an Indian village that is decimated by a new disease that kills 98% of your village? Uh, cities in this uh, 18th and 19th century in America that were overrun with cholera, yellow fever, or some other uh, pandemic, uh, terrifying things that we're going through right now. There are memories of that. And then more important, I think the depression and World War II tempered us for the kind of shared sacrifice that we are experiencing today. Uh, and, and this is a hugely important moment. Let's talk about that shared sacrifice. I think it is important. People across the country are all pitching in, maybe for the first time in some of their lifetimes. Um, how do you think this will change us um, as, as people going forward? You know, human nature remains the same. The quantities of greed and generosity, purience and puritanism are all there. Uh, we have an opportunity with this crisis to reset, to get away from the kind of knee-jerk divisions, the idea that it's easier to arouse a mob than it is to appeal to our better angels. And we're seeing people realizing the central role that government has always played in our life. It's been very easy over the last several decades to just knee-jerk 
you know, bash government, but I know we now see that government becomes the focal point, the fulcrum to help us get through these crises. And the, and the, the fact that we can shed the labels of red state or blue state, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Democrat, Republican will be central to our solving the problem. And hopefully we don't then just go back to the old ways, that we really have an opportunity to reset. And half of that, for me, is getting people to understand the power of history, what a great teacher it is uh, for us. And, and that's why PBS and I are, are involved in this sort of massive effort to realize we've got now an audience at home, not just the students and the teachers, but the parents and the communities that need to be reminded that there are a set of American facts that we know and are verifiable and that we need to tell our historical stories to one another to help us uh, get through these really and, tough times. And Ken, I think it's interesting that you say, a lot of people always use the phrase, history repeats itself. History repeats itself. You say no, that that's not the case. No, no, no. Mark Twain is supposed to have said that history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. If he did say it, it's perfect, because I've never finished a project where I haven't looked up and said, oh, my goodness, uh, it's happening today. Human nature doesn't change, Hoda, and it superimposes itself, itself good and bad over whatever random series of events are, are going on. And so we see themes, they're echoes. And I, I think it's really important now to take our kids, as we're doing with PBS, tonight I'm on a webinar with uh, teachers, to remind them of these enduring themes about freedom, about leadership, about uh, hard times, about race, about women, mm -hmm. about art about innovation, all of these things that occur and reoccur, that echo and rhyme throughout American history that will arm us in the best possible way to deal with this present moment, to be open uh, to the possibilities of real fundamental change and to shed what has been you know, several decades of just horrific division. Uh, it's made somebody some money somewhere, but it doesn't mean anything. As I said in your clip at the head time, there's only us and there's no them. And if anyone tells you there that there's a them, walk away from them. And speaking of hard times, I mean, a lot of people, we, our unemployment numbers are sky high. Mm. The economy is going down. I mean, a lot of people are concerned. But just what does history tell us about our ability to bounce back after something like this? There are three truths, you know, it's going to change. Um, you need to get help from others and you have to be kind to yourself. And history continually tells that not just in an intimate psychological way, but in a collective way. We will get through this. Uh, things will be very, very different and that we have to be mindful, particularly of those of us fortunate enough to have a space uh, to have a conversation like mm -hmm. this or to be able to talk to students across the country that some people don't, that there are others are rushing towards this fire, not trying to shelter away from it. There are people really suffering hard times that we know that the disease is disproportionately hurting African-Americans and people of color. And that is a terrible thing. And so we have to obviously guard ourselves and our families. Mm -hmm. But let's not you lose the ultimate American sense of community, of the U.S. meaning us, that we can be mindful to of those less fortunate than ourselves. We'll get through mm -hmm. a tragedy if we try to bring back that love and sense of community uh, that we have, uh, have had to employ at times when things have been super tough for us. Well, I know a we'll lot of... Through. A lot of people are going to be interested in the Ken Burns classroom. We already learned a lot in this kind of five minutes we've been together. Just in the last couple of seconds, they say baseball. Baseball might be back in the summertime. Just your quick thoughts on that. Well, I hope so. It's why when it went out, we just decided to, for free, uh, PBS stream the entire baseball series. Now, Thursday nights, they're playing the Roosevelts, and that'll be followed by the National Parks, and then our history of World War II called The War. And we're working with PBS Learning Media to prepare even more robust agendas. We've got our own website connected to PBS called Unum, which means one, in which we're sharing the way in which the past stories, as you and I have been talking about, Oda, interact with the present moment, uh, whatever that present moment might be. It might be the ERA and women getting uh, the vote 100 years ago. It might be uh, pandemics. It might be a, a variety of things, hard times uh, that we're talking about. So I'm hoping that we can, you know, history is always been that castor oil that you hold your nose and 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 think but it's really going to be uh the biggest uh help in us getting out of this
All right. Ken Burns, we appreciate you again. The Ken Burns Classroom is available, as are all of your documentaries on PBS. We appreciate you, Ken. Thank you so much. Thank you. Be well. All right. You too. We're back in a moment. But first, this is Today on NBC. (laughs) 